Well, good morning, 1st of May, and I'm on my way to the Kedron Brook Wetlands. Never been here before, so we've just passed the Nudgee Road overpass, and we're going to take the northern suburbs turn off, which is the next one here. Northern suburbs, city, Southern Crossway. So here we go. We take the Trimble Road, Virginia turn off and we stay on our left hand lane here and we're going to come to a roundabout here and our stopping point is well, just at the end of the roundabout you can see there's a car just parked there to our left this is our stopping point so this is where you have to stop and the entry to the Kedron Brook wetlands is just here on our left if you're coming on the gateway keep an eye out for the northern suburbs exit it's just after the gateway bridge this will lead you onto this road and watch for the Nudgee Road exit. Take the Nudgee Road exit, go underneath the overpass in on the roundabout and it will drop you right at this location. So 25 past 7, we just got to the Kidron Book Wetlands. First time I've been here. Now this morning I'm using my Sony ZV-1, I'm not using the Osmo Mobile. So if the horizon gets a little bit crooked sometime, we're right close to the Brisbane Airport here so I would have loved to do a drone video of here. We're in the no-fly zone, so I can't fly my drone here. I can already see so many birds here. We've got some stilts, got a pelican a little bit further out. Got some ibis on the other side here. Wow, this is the closest I've ever gotten to stilts. Wow. Like always, I'm using my Nikon D500, the Nikon 200-500mm. My setup is always the same, and I'm going to do a very short video about how I set up my camera, and I'll put the link up here because so many people ask me how do I set up my D500 for wildlife so instead of every time I do a wildlife photo walk giving you my setup I'll just put a link up to this very short video that tells you how I set up my camera so if you want to see how I set up my camera check out here let's check out some of these birds here now just in front of us here we've got a very nice little stilt here let's take a photo eh? wow how about one in portrait Oh, portrait looks even better. Wow, this is so nice. Now let's see what else is around. Now just in front of us here, we've got some egrets. We've got some intermediate egrets. And we have a little, little egret here. Oh, very nice. Hiding behind the bush here. Oh, I could have gotten that in flight. So I'll turn the camera off. I'll just see if I can get a few more photos. So the sun comes from the east here so this is a really good time of the day and I think the wetlands at any time would be alright because whether it's sunrise or sunset you've got side light which is perfect. Now I did say that it was a bit dark the first couple of photos. Decided to use a bit of exposure compensation and what do you know an egret was landing. Took a few shots but the egret being white I just blew out the exposure so my bad. So I've just brought it back down to zero exposure compensation. We'll see what happens. I haven't been here before, so this is just like an exploration trip. So I'm about where I started from, but I've just walked through some brush here and like I said, you have to be careful here. There's quite a few red belly black snakes around, so we've got a good pair of boots. But I went walking down the track because I haven't been here before, so I said, okay, well, let's see what's further down. So I just went walking eastwards down the track, nothing really. We walked away from the wetlands. All I could hear was superb fairy rants, just everywhere. But they were playing hide and seek and I just couldn't get a photo of them. Started walk back, saw heaps of Indian miners up in a big tree, took a couple of photos of them. Now we're back close and you can see just in the background here, we're very close to the wetlands and I could hear the familiar sound of grebs. I'm going to try to sneak up on them and get a couple of close up photos because this is what I've gotten just from this location here. You can see you, they're just in the middle of the frame here. Try to get a little bit closer and let's see what we can photograph. We'll just take it nice and easy. 
The water birds are just to my right here. Let's see if we can get a bit closer. I don't know if you can hear that. That's grebs. That's their familiar sound of grebs. Now we got plovers. Sometimes they're a pain because they spook other birds. There's just a lot of stilts around here. Very soggy here. Now where's the ibis? The black winged stilts seem to be very inquisitive here. Most other places I've been to they just fly off, but here they're very inquisitive. Oh, some corals. There's some black corals just flying across the sky. Little woolly ragtime. I like trying to get low down, so sorry if my voice goes a bit soft. Let's try and walk a little bit to our left here. Let's see what's around here. There's some egrets in front of us just behind these bushes here. I got a nice dotrel. Here's a photo of it. It was just so close at 500 mil. These birds are so small, so it was really nice to get this close to it. And this is a place, if you like photographing stilts, you'll be in heaven here. You can get very close to the stilts. Got a couple of other photos of some ducks. There were some grey teals and other ducks, but they were just so far out. We're just going to walk a little bit to the right here, because we got a couple of egrets. Just there. Let's see if we can just get a nice photo of it. It's just in front of us here. Oh, look at that, it's hunting. So this is... There's a bird that I love photographing, it's hard to photograph. I think it's a grey shriek cooker shrike. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put the name down here. Let's see if we can walk a bit further. There's not a huge amount of birds here. The light is a bit dull. Some people prefer sun, but the thing is, in bright sunlight, you do get a nice light on the birds. White birds are overexposed so much, so in dull days like this, very easy to control your exposure. Look at that. Wow. Hunting away. Oh, did it get something? I think it did. Got a little fish. Yep, it got something. Look at the reflections here. So nice. Let's walk a little bit further to our right here and see what we can find. This is so sloshy here. If you want to come getting close to the wetlands, definitely bring gum boots. That's definitely what I'm bringing next time. But my boots are waterproof, they're a bit dirty, but they'll dry out very quickly. Can you hear? Listen to all that. These are all stilts here, just squawking away. Like I said, if you want to come photograph stilts, you're going to get very close to some stilts here. Just in front here. We don't have one, we have two glossy ibises. So I'm going to try to sneak a bit closer to these trees here and take a photo. Let's try to see if we can get close to these glossy ibises. I really want a nice shot of a glossy ibis. I only got a really nice shot of one in flight at least two years ago. So let's see what we can do. So when I shut the camera off, I said I was going to sneak up to some glossy ibises. I shut the camera off, started walking towards them. And what did I notice on my left? There was a glossy ibis just there in front of me, half the distance away. Take a look at these shots, beautiful. Now the reason they're called a glossy ibis is when the sun's out and their light hits their feathers on their wings, they just glow, they're beautiful. I got a couple of really nice shots, a couple of other egrets as well. But egrets don't really like this sort of weather, they prefer a nice sunny day where they can see clearly into the water and do their hunting. So it started off a bit slow this morning but I'm quite happy here. I always tell people I go out because I enjoy wildlife. Whether I get a couple of photos or whether I get 50 or 100 photos doesn't really matter. I just like being out here. This is my first time here. I didn't know what to expect. This place has got some potential. I might come back here a bit later. My next wildlife photo walk or bird walk is I want to get closer to the city. There's a couple of wildlife places just on the other side of the Brisbane River there that I definitely have to check out. But I'm going to wait for my mate to come back from Yapoon. He's been there so he'll give me the rundown of the place before we start taking photos. So I'm just going to walk a little bit more and just see what's around. So 
that's it for me. Quartz dying. I photographed quite a few birds. I'll definitely come back here. But what I forgot to mention is when I photographed the glossy ibis, there was a waiter there just looking at me. Took a couple of photos, but I was just waiting, hoping that it would just turn sight on. I don't always shoot at one, two and a half thousandths of a second. I shoot for the conditions that prevail. So if it's just waders walking around or birds walking around, I'll reduce my shutter speed. 1 640th, 1 800th. I don't try to go above 1 1,000th of a second unless it's egrets and I can see that they're actively hunting. Then I will increase my shutter speed. Walked around a little bit further and I like photographing birds in flight. Just as I turned, I saw right in on the horizon, there was this bird coming in. Look through the, the camera. Yep, it was a pelican coming in coming in very low, zoomed out to 500, quickly increased my shutter speed to one two and a half thousandths of a second. It was coming in behind some brushes, but I just kept following it along and I'd seen a couple of pelicans further along. I go, yep, I'm pretty sure I know where you're going. So I just kept tracking and tracking. All of a sudden, like I saw it brings its wings back a little bit here. Yep, you're slowing down like a jumbo jet. Wings out, flaps out, got a couple of good shots of it. Although it was a bit far, still very happy with birds in flight. Here's a couple of photos of the pelicans and I will show you why I don't always shoot at one, two and a half thousandths of a second. And nor should you, because I shoot auto ISO, so your ISO is going to fluctuate. Here's a photo of the pelicans at one, two and a half thousandths of a second. And look at the ISO, 1,250. Now, at one, one thousandth of a second, I'm down to ISO 500, more than half. So I'm going to have less noise. I'm going to be able to work on that photo a bit more. I can bring out the shadows a bit more. The higher your ISO, the more likely you are to induce noise in your photo. So try to keep your shutter speed for what you're photographing. See, so if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Stay safe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Really helps me out. Enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.